rad roach meat for dinner anyone, or some brahmin milk. You might need some of these for their healing powers, because the wild menagerie of mutant creatures seen in the Fallout show will blow your mind. The Amazon Prime series brought in some fan favorite monsters from the Fallout games, and reintroduced them with a deadlier twist. For example, the mutated salamanders can gulp down entire humans, while the irradiated cockroaches can feast on a full grown adult. The show also includes major easter eggs in the form of a super mutant arm, and a deathclaw skull. And fans cannot keep calm. In this video, we'll tell you all about the post-war mutant creatures that wreak havoc on the post-apocalyptic wasteland. So pull out your guns and let's begin, shall we? Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Gulpers, radioactive salamanders of the wasteland. In the Fallout universe, while spotting a water body amidst the scorching heat might seem like a blessing, it may actually turn out to be a curse, all thanks to the Gulper. In the Fallout games, this creature is an amphibious salamander that was mutated by nuclear radiation and turned into a violent bipedal monster. This radioactive species grows to humongous proportions over time and are capable of gulping down gigantic prey, which explains their name, the Gulper. In the Amazon show, the Gulpers got a menacing twist, both in terms of size and hostility. As extremely territorial creatures, they guard their residential water bodies and are drawn to any living beings that hover around their shores. The show's antagonist, the ghoul, used the protagonist Lucy as bait to lure a gulper onto the surface, resulting in a flinch-worthy scene, which showed the insides of the gulper's mouth in a slow-mo-esque sequence. Instead of teeth, the gulper's mouth is lined with rows of human fingers, while its head is covered with spiky tentacles, kind of like a giant Venus flytrap. Strangely enough, the Gulper has muscular, human-like arms with webbed fingers. The reason behind this creature's human-like appendages is explained in an old video footage of a Vault 4 scientist who confessed about hybridizing humans with radiation-resistant species to create creepy, out-of-control monsters, and it seems like the Gulper is one of them, who later escaped into the wasteland and haunts the water bodies. Because it gulps down its prey whole, the Gulper takes a long time to digest the food. That's how the show's characters were successful in recovering a cut-off human head from its stomach, a human head which had world-altering powers. Rad Roaches, mutated cockroaches that eat human flesh. Those who joked about cockroaches not surviving the nuclear blast were in for a rude shock in the post-war era. The insect species not only survived, but got mutated by the radiation in the process. Now these bulged up insects are known as Rad Roaches, which are one of the frequently seen creatures in the games. In the show, a fresh out of the vault Lucy has her first encounter with a Rad Roach when she was resting on a dark corner of the wasteland by a bonfire. Thanks to Dr. Wildzig's canine companion, CX-404, Lucy didn't get eaten up at the very beginning of her journey. The doggo happily munched on the rad roach that was on its way to attack Lucy, but even CX-404 had to struggle for a while to tear through the rad roach's hard shell. Dr. Wilzig explained to the shocked protagonist that in order to adapt to the wasteland ecosystem, these creatures have an enlarged thorax to ward off attacks, extended antennae in order to hunt in packs, and incisors to help ingest larger prey. The rad roaches thrive in the dark and dingy parts of the wasteland and usually hunt in packs. At night, they're attracted to light sources and attack their victims from the dark. They're giant-sized cockroaches, which usually feed on the dead, but are extremely aggressive towards living beings as well. They're always hungry for human flesh and violently attack Maximus Brotherhood armor, hoping to eat him up alive. Rad roach meat is a sought-after food item in the games, which is consumed to heal radiation poisoning. <laughs> Yaogwai, irradiated black bear that resides in a cave. What can make an armored brotherhood night panic? Yaogwai, that's the irradiated black bear species in Fallout. When Knight Titus and Squire Maximus arrived at a forest cave, they were jumped by a devilish bear, whose claws were sharp enough to scratch through the tough T-60 power armor of the night. One roar of this Yaogwai was enough to make Knight Titus use the F word and run for dear life. The encounter ended with the bear tossing around the T-60 armored knight like a cat toy. Maximus managed to take down the Yaogwai with a gunshot to the head, which, however, seemed too easy a death for this bear monstrosity. The Yalgwai are the mutated descendants of the American black bear species that survived the nuclear holocaust in the Fallout franchise. Their bodies are covered in boils and burns, scrapes and wounds, which add to the Yalgwai's threatening appearance. Their razor-sharp claws and teeth and gigantic size make them one of the most feared creatures of the wasteland. They are extremely hostile and have a reputation for perceiving every other wasteland creature as threats, so much so that they wouldn't hesitate to attack the dreaded death 
death claws as well. In the games, the Yaogwai can be hunted for their meat and hide. I walk with my shadow. Death Claws, bioengineered monsters that escaped into the wild. Next up, we have the most dreaded monster of the Fallout franchise, the Death Claw. Though fans didn't get to see one of these in action, the inclusion of a Death Claw tease in the final scene hinted that Death Claws are coming in Season 2. In the final episode, a cracked up Death Claw skull was spotted outside the barricaded city of New Vegas, which is where the action is expected to be in the next season. In Fallout lore, Death Claws are bioengineered monsters created by the US military before the Great War in order to replace humans in search and destroy missions. After the bombs dropped and the surface world was reduced to rubble, these creatures escaped into the wild. They became apex predators, with teeth as large as human forearms and claws as sharp as wolverine. These 20-foot tall creatures were designed to be bipedal for their usage in battle, and were created as a cocktail of several species, primarily the Jackson's Horned Chameleon, which gives the Death Claws their dual horned appearance. They have threatening dorsal spikes along the back and sharp talons, which are capable of slicing up a human body in one strike. Some experimental Death Claws were born with the intelligence of an eight-year-old, and even surpassed the intelligence of adults, eventually being able to mimic human voices like a parrot. During the first century of the Great War, the Death Claws were regarded as mythical creatures, or ghost-like entities because of their rarity. But as Death Claws began to grow in numbers and dominate the wasteland, their ferocity and resilience made them the most feared monsters of the post-apocalyptic world. Brahmin, the docile two-headed cows. For a brief moment in the series, the Brahmin appeared, a two-headed cow of the Fallout series. In post-war America, the mutated species of cows developed two heads and came to be known as the Brahmin. They were raised as livestock for the umpteen numbers of benefits they provided. Lucy encountered one such conjoined-headed Brahmin near the town of Philly while it was being herded by a wastelander. While the show version of the Brahmin looked exactly like a cow, except for the extra head of course, the games were not so kind with their appearance. The game versions of Brahmins have brown irradiated skin, with bony structures and gigantic udders, and as many as eight stomach compartments, twice that of the pre-war cows. Despite their irradiated appearance, the Brahmin are a gentle species, which occasionally attack by headbutting with their twin heads. In the gaming lore, Brahmin stocks are central to the post-war economy and they're easy to maintain and provide great returns. The Brahmin can go without water for days and survive just on scraps of wasteland weed. Their feces produce fertilizer and fuel, and their milk has radiation healing qualities. Brahmin bones are also used to make weapons by the wastelanders, while their fat is used for soap making. Ghouls, wasteland zombies that lose their minds. Mutant bears, mutant cows, mutant roaches, what's next? Mutant humans? Yep, that's right. Time to meet the ghouls. During the Great War, those who couldn't secure a spot in the underground vaults remained on the surface and were exposed to the ambient radiation. Some unlucky folks were closer to ground zero and absorbed lethal amounts of radiation, which turned them into wasteland zombies known as ghouls. These mutated beings who were once human developed necrosis of the skin, which gave them a decaying appearance. The ghouls eventually lost their noses, making them look like walking, talking skull heads. Cursed with enhanced lifespan, the ghouls are incredibly difficult to finish off in the Fallout series, and can only be killed by blowing up their hairless heads. The ghouls retain their former memories and intelligence for a while, till they go feral, a condition in which they lose their minds and develop a penchant for human flesh. The primary antagonist of Season 1, Howard Cooper, aka The Ghoul, averts his condition by constantly inhaling a mysterious yellow serum that keeps him from going insane. The ghouls have regenerative abilities and can reattach body parts Parts, and that's how Cooper's index finger is half his own and half of Lucy's. The series revealed that post-war humans can also be transformed into ghouls by inhaling a strange concoction, which gives them the same regenerative abilities as those turned ghouls by the nuclear bombings. As a product of radiation, the ghouls are completely immune to radioactivity, but without the yellow drug, they have labored breathing and are incapacitated within minutes. In the games, the post-war zombies are shunned from society because of their ghoulish appearance, which further contributes to their psychological corruption. Super Mutants, bulked up warriors that were once humans. In case you missed it, the show included a major easter egg in a blink and miss it scene in the second episode. The scene at the Enclave showed a humanoid creature being carried away on a stretcher, with just its greenish black arm hanging out from under the sheets. Now, given that Enclave is the paramilitary organization that carries out inhuman experiments in the Fallout universe, it shouldn't come as a surprise if the humanoid turns out to be an actual super mutant. These hybrid mutant species are central to the Fallout lore. The super mutants were created by the military military by exposing normal humans to enhanced levels of the artificially developed forced evolutionary virus. 
This experiment resulted in intensely bulked up mutants with incredible strength and durability who can withstand radiation and are immune to disease and harm. As experimental humanoids, these super mutants come with enhanced intelligence. They were initially created by the character named Master, who believed that forced evolution of humans was the only solution to the nuclear war. Thus, in the Fallout show, it made sense that a dead super mutant was spotted within the Enclave, as it was revealed in the final episode that the vault tech scientists went bonkers with their experiments, creating hybrid humans to survive the nuclear holocaust. You share only 50% of Hank McLean's DNA. Brain on a Roomba, hello Bud Askins. Another interesting entity seen in the Fallout show was the Brain on a Roomba. In the finale episode, this brain thingy turns out to be the guardian of Vault Number 31. While brain cyborgs are frequently found in the games, this one was somewhat different. It contained the brain and consciousness of the former ambitious Vault Tech employee Bud Askins, and spoke in its voice through augmentations. The brain was placed inside a glass jar, which was fixed on top of a Roomba, giving it a rather creepy appearance. It's capable of scanning objects or people in front of him, and reading their DNA, all the while talking in Bud Askin's voice. The brain attempted to inject the character Norm with a shot of tranquilizer, but given that it's navigating on a Roomba, it looked like a really silly effort. Bud Askin's brain has guarded Vault Number 31's dark secret for centuries, which was finally unveiled in the last episode. Bud Askin's was the Vault Tech executive who theorized that trained individuals, or Bud's Buds, were to go into cryosleep for decades so that they could wake up in the post-war future and control the irradiated remains of humanity. In the finale episode, when Norm discovered the human containers in Vault 31, Bud Askin's brain proudly declared, These are my buds! Buds, buds. Two-Headed Bear, more of a symbol than a real creature. The Two-Headed Bear is another mutated creature that appears on the show, but only as a motif on a flag. Just like in the games, this bear abomination does not have any real-life screen presence on the show either. It stands as the symbol of the New California Republic faction, appearing on its flag as a mutated depiction of the extinct California grizzly bear. The inhabitants of the post-war world are mutants, and hence the mutated bear symbol suggests that the New California Republic is ready to deal with this new, dangerous world and its abominations. The series the series' climactic scenes take place within the NCR headquarters, where the flag and the bear are clearly visible for the first time ever. The New California Republic stands as a rebellious movement against the corporate powers that started the nuclear war. And in that context, the two-headed bear is an allegory for the disastrous effects of the Holocaust that gave rise to the mutated animals and humans across the wasteland. In the last episode, the twin-headed bear symbol appears on screen just when the New California Republic leader activated the cold fusion technology, thus signifying NCR's victory over the evil corporate forces that were gatekeeping the technology to shroud the world in a perpetual state of war. Marvelous Verdict. So folks, that was a catalog of the Fallout creatures that made it to Season 1, and we can't wait to see what Season 2 will have in store for us. From the Scorch Beast Queen, and the Ancient Behemoths, to the Shipbreaker, and the Nuke Alert Queen. The series makers have a wild collection of monsters to choose from from the Fallout games, and place them in New Vegas. After all, the only rule of Wasteland is that there are no rules, and the fiercest species will reign supreme over the dominant ones. With that thought in mind, your fellow monster head is signing out for now. But stay tuned for more Wasteland theories and Fallout content. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!